Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here and I am so excited to be joined by someone that I admire so much. She's a world changer, beloved actress and producer of the Bible and Son of God and so many other incredible things. And we have something else on the horizon coming to Discovery Plus just in time for Easter Resurrection the story of Jesus's crucifixion. Roma, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it is my absolute pleasure. It's lovely to see you and um, you look very well. I hope you've been, you've been safe and healthy through this challenging time that we've been living in. Yes, by the grace of God, he's kept me and I'm honored and so, so do you. So I'm just grateful that in the midst of all the chaos, you're still making uh, content that'll help us get through. So let's kind of talk a little bit about that. I know we don't have a lot of time, but resurrection. Um, you wish to share hope with the world during this time. How are you hoping to do that with the, the story of Jesus's crucifixion during this season? Well, you know, let's face it, it uh, the story of Easter is the greatest story of hope that ever was. And my husband, Mark, and I thought that this Easter in particular, uh, I think we are all hungry for hope. We're all hungry, you know, for some good news. And, um, and so we got together with a team of editors and we were able to craft and shape this beautiful film, 90 minute film, which takes us on a journey really from the point of view of the disciples. So the picture opens up at the crucifixion of Jesus. And we see and understand that the disciples have scattered. They're afraid. Um, Peter has been spotted in the crowd. Somebody says, you, you were with him. You're one of his followers. And as we know from scripture, Peter denies Jesus three times because perhaps if he didn't, he might have been, he might have been killed himself, you know? So they've all scattered to different corners and now Jesus is dead. And uh, John, the beloved, and Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, were the only three who were there at the foot of the cross and saw him die and laid him to rest themselves. When they all come back and they start gathering, it's a, it's a mixed bunch of emotions that they're all feeling. Um, there's fear, there's uh, doubt, there's, um, uh, you know, confusion, uh, Chaos is reigning in Jerusalem, and they're not really quite sure what their next move should be. Um, and we see within that, that, um, you know, the story is going to, it, there's no spoiler alerts here. I think right. we all know what the story <laughs> is, but it plays out like a, like a great drama, like a thriller, really. Yeah. Because in Jerusalem at that time, we have Pontius Pilate and the Roman army who are, are serious oppressors. They're roaming, ruling with an iron fist. And then we have the temple authorities and run by the head priest Caiaphas. And with, with Passover approaching in the city, they have tried to get rid of the Jesus problem and get rid of it quickly. We know they tried him in the night, tried him unjustly. They quickly um, committed him to death and executed him. And we have the disciples at this point still fearful and uncertain about what their next um, move will be. And the film plays out as these three energies keep clashing off of each other. Mm -hmm. So there's great tension, great drama in the story. Of course, um, once Joseph of Arimathea has offered his tomb uh, to Jesus and you know they, they lay him to rest, now the high priest is nervous because this surely could be in fulfillment of the scripture if he's in a rich man's tomb. Mm -hmm. And so he goes to Pontius Pilate and he says, you've got to give me the a part of the Roman army to guard this tomb because they're going to steal the body of Jesus. They're going to steal him and they're going to pretend that he's risen. We've got to guard that tomb to make sure that doesn't happen. So they put the Roman seal on the stone. They put the army at the at the mouth of the tomb. And of course, on the third day, um, we have uh, some incredible special effects 
to help yeah. um, illustrate the story, but the heavens start moving in a supernatural way. And down to earth comes this beautiful, tough warrior angel. And, um, and then the part of the film that always gives me goosebumps is that from behind the stone, deep inside the tomb, we see the light coming and it's yeah. vibrating and pulsing because Jesus has risen and the angel pushes away the stone and the world is changed forever. Yes, I love it, I love it. Thank you so much for recounting it. I, I think that's what's so amazing about resurrection because I did get a sneak peek. Um, the, I love the drama, I love the tension. Um, I think also just the playing it out in such darkness, the time of darkness where the sheep are scattered. You know, I think about just what happened in 2020 and how so many people kind of their faith was shaken because church was taken away, you know? Yeah. Um, so I definitely think for such a time as this, one point that the film did emphasize on, which I absolutely loved was the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, when yeah. Jesus resurrects and he tells us that he leaves with us his presence and we get to see the disciples experience God's tangible presence on yeah. earth. I know, it's which is an amazing what, scene, the so Pentecostal powerful. scene. It's so powerful. Um, it's, it is, it's one of my favorites as we see them gathered in the upper room. He promised them that he would send the Holy Spirit. I don't know that they even really knew what that meant, what right. that would look like, how it would feel. But uh, we have uh, uh, brought it to life visually with these great dramatic um, circles of flames and fire in the room. The room is alive with God and we see them filling up with this with spirit filling up with this fuel that's going to take them through the rest of their journey and to go do what he asked them to do, which is to yeah. go share the gospel with the world. And when the door opens and they finally stumble down the stairs, they're, they're speaking languages they didn't even know they could speak. They're speaking, <laughs> to, they're just so full of God and they're ready then yeah. to, to, uh, to profess their faith. And um, I, I really, um, think it was meaningful and impactful at the very end of the film. We're now fueled by the Holy Spirit. We recap how each of them went out into the world, but we remind the audience that they were just a handful of believers that, that, our, that our faith started with. But wow. now we are over 2 billion uh, Christians in the yeah. world. And I, I just think it's so you know, empowering for us because Absolutely. the Holy Spirit's available to all of us, right? Um, That's what I was gonna ask you about. Yeah, sometimes because, we forget to ask. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, there hasn't been a project that Mark and I haven't started that we haven't prayed before we started. So and we prayed to the Holy Spirit to guide us, to strengthen us, to you know help us to make the right ch ch casting choices, to help us make the right hiring choices, to bring in uh, excellent people, to find them for us. I mean, we, we've never, any decision in my life, big or small, I've never made without praying first. So that scene in particular really resonates with me. I haven't yes. quite experienced the, the rings of fire, but <laughs> um, I have felt um, divinely guided at mm. some times and, um, you know, and here to have been able to get this movie ready in time for this Easter, because it's, let's face it, it's just been the most challenging of years for everybody. Yeah. And, you know, and in many ways, because of the isolation, because of how we've been locked down in very small groups and we've been disconnected from friends and extended family, you know, it's a little tomb-like for each of us, I think, yeah. that, uh, and I think collectively, we are all longing for a resurrection of our lives, you know, that we can get back into our lives, that we can get back to our loved ones, that we can get back into work and school and all the things that we've been cut off from. So I feel that the story, apart from all the obvious messages and the, that, that it's the most important story in our faith, yes. I feel also the symbolism within the movie is perfect for for this particular time. And I have very fond memories myself of gathering around the TV at Easter when I was a child and watching, you know, back then, 
it was a long time ago <laughs> back then it was like the ten commandments or the greatest story ever told but we created a tradition that we would always do that and i'm really hopeful maybe that that by watching resurrection on discovery plus this easter season that maybe it'll be the first of an annual tradition that families will start doing together because while we all appreciate the easter bunny and I've never said no to a chocolate egg. Um, <laughs> we can't forget what the real message of Easter is and yeah. the importance and how central it is to our, to our faith. I mean, you could remove Christmas from the New Testament and you still have the New Testament. But if you removed Easter or the story of the resurrection from the New Testament, you know, I don't know that it would, mm. it would have the same impact. This yeah. was the miracle. This was the biggest miracle, the life-changing miracle for, for Jesus, because Jesus said he would rise. And then by rising, he, he was the man he said he was. He was the son mm. of God. And um, yeah, so- One final, uh, anyway, one final thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, yes. I, well, I know we have to wrap it up, but one final thing before we go. Um, first of all, thank you for making content that we can make traditions with. I got to say that. I appreciate that so much. And um, just one final thing, if you had something to share with with those that are going to be watching this or, or reading this interview um, on how they can access that hope, the hope of the Holy Spirit that we have here with us because of Christ's resurrection, what would you say? Uh -huh. Well, I would, you know, I think that a, a, a theme that has resonated through my life is sometimes feeling alone or feeling abandoned. I know that, um, you know, in the midst of a crisis like this, and because we couldn't go to church, we couldn't gather with our friends, maybe friends who often would support us and buoy us through hard times, um, that there's a sense of aloneness. and. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I would just remind everybody that, you know, that we're not alone. And, you know, one, I've always taken great comfort in the, the little prayer uh, footprints, you know, mm -hmm. the one where, where the person cries out and says, Lord, when I needed you the most, where were you? There's only one set of footprints on the beach. And the Lord says, why, it was then that I was carrying you. And I would just offer that as some comfort, you know, because he is, he's carrying all of us and we may not see the wisdom or the plan here, you know, we, we can only see with human eyes and experience through our own humanity. We don't know, but God knows, you know, and, and we just have to be reminded to trust him, to place our trust in him. But um, yes, uh, we have continued also through pandemic with Lightworkers, you know, which is our banner production mm -hmm. company, uh, Lightworkers Made Resurrection yeah. and all of our other content. And Lightworkers has continued to have and grow a very strong social presence. And we're committed to inspire, to uplift, to, you know, post daily. We post scripture, we post uplifting videos. Um, we've seen such huge growth in the last year and i think it speaks to just the need in people's lives that people are tired of the of the division people are tired of the hateful words and the hateful rhetoric i think people are are longing for connection again to be reminded that we have more in common than not and to remember to be kind to each other so that's an, another thing just that we continue to do at lightworkers and i encourage your viewers maybe to to come check us out on our facebook and on our Instagram and, and Twitter and so on. We're very active and we're committed every day just to adding positivity yeah. and light. Yeah, and I'm always so blessed when I'm going through my feed to see the videos. You remind us what wholesome entertainment is, is like and what real life experiences with yes. family or your pets or, or just beautiful moments that make us remember oh. that God is still good. He's still on the throne and there's a reason yes, against this. Yes, Roma, thank you so and you know, much. You speak, of, you speak of wholesome entertainment, which reminds me, is this why the reason that we partnered with Discovery Plus? Um, because a lot of the streamers had wanted resurrection. Of course, it's an Easter movie and they assume that it will pull in a big Christian audience for Easter. And we're prayerful that it will. Um, but Discovery Plus is, is a new platform, but it's completely family friendly. 
It has mm -hmm. lots of great content in there that, um, that is appropriate for you and for your family. And we thought that was important, you know, if we're asking people to come in and watch this movie and it's very inexpensive, you think what you might have paid to go to the theater, you know, by the time you get your popcorn and your drink and your ticket, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're well into that evening, it's an investment. But for, you know, for under $5, uh, you can join Discovery Plus, you'll get a ton of other great content and you'll get to see this film, which we hope will bless your bless the audience we hope it will bless you. And uh, we hope that it will be just a great additive to the Easter season in your home.